taking 280 to church on Wednesday morning, I noticed a sign hung on a fence on an overpass over the freeway. It read, Jesus or hell. I doubt these signs work. I just don't believe that there are people passing by, reading the sign and thinking, oh gosh, I better go and find a church. <laughs> Jesus or hell. I always cringe when I read stuff like that. And then I wonder, who puts up these signs? Who undergoes the struggle of having them printed, of carrying them outside, of finding a spot where they literally get a lot of traffic and then put them up in a way that they are a pain to take down again? Who are those people and what Bible do they use? How do they come to the conclusion, Jesus or hell? It's certainly not in the Bible that includes our gospel for today. The two parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin. Jesus is still in Jerusalem when he tells the parables, and large crowds follow him, people of all genders, ages, and backgrounds, children, women, and men, Pharisees and scribes, tax collectors, and sinners. And Jesus notices that while he's speaking, the tax collectors and sinners listen attentively, while the Pharisees and scribes are busy criticizing the audience and Jesus' welcoming attitude towards them. This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now Jesus must have, must have overheard them because he addresses the two parables to the Pharisees and scribes. So the first one is about the shepherd who leaves his flock of 99 sheep behind in search of one last lamb. And he searches it, searches until he finds it. He carries it home on his shoulders. He jubilantly invites friends and neighbors to celebrate that he found what was lost. The second parable is about a woman who loses one of her 10 silver coins. And she keeps looking for it, lighting a lamp, sweeping the entire house until she finds it. And she, too, invites friends and neighbors to join into her celebration of having back what she believed to be lost. Now, I can picture the Pharisees and scribes reluctantly, <coughs> reluctantly listening and trying to fit their picture of God and God's expectations towards them into these parables. But we are the ones living according to God's rules. We are examples of moral and respectability. The tax collectors and sinners, they don't have their act together. If they would live like we do, they would be welcome to join our club. But they don't. And until then, they are undeserving of God's attention. But as usually, Jesus upends commonplace ideas about what God wants and does. God isn't a stickler for rules. God is love, full of grace and mercy, and therefore grace and mercy always come first. God isn't making rational decisions. Well, it'd be better to cut my losses and protect the 99 sheep. Or I could spend my time more productively looking more productively than sweeping the entire house for one lost coin. God is love, and love is not rational, not counting. God loves with unconditional grace and steadfast mercy from the very beginning. Those that aren't lost, those that are, and those that are found. Or should I rather say all that are lost and that are found? Because I think we are all lost sometimes, somehow. We are all part of the flock. The flock are baptized in a congregation, people in a community, humans as part of creation. And sometimes it is you, and sometimes it is me who lose the connection to the other sheep. We feel we don't belong. We lose the will to interact with other people. 
We lose our capacity to trust. We lose the sense of God's presence in our life. We lose the connection to our environment, fellow creatures. I have experienced that at least once profoundly. How about you? The reasons for getting lost are countless. Some of us get lost while lying in or sitting next to hospital beds, and we wonder if we lost God or God lost us. Some of us get lost when tragedy hits and death cuts short the life of a loved one, and we don't even have the strength to cry out, God, where are you now? Some of us get lost when a relationship breaks. Some of us get lost in loneliness. Some of us get lost in the agonies of addiction or depression or jealousy or unforgiveness or hatred or bitterness. Some of us get lost here within our congregation, sitting in the pew. The words sound hollow, the prayers empty, Communion leaves us hungry, cranky, bewildered, and bored. Some of us get lost watching the news, wondering how a loving God can let these things happen. Some of us get lost at work, at home, at school, where there's too much pressure, where there's eye-rolling, condescension, or bullying, when there's no appreciation for who we are when we are never enough. We also can get lost in our daily lives, habits, sociocultural practices. And we can get lost as communities, forgetting to care about what is important, who are our neighbors and fellow creatures, and what are their needs. To sum it up, though the reasons are different, we all get lost in our lives are found and can get lost again. So we all need to hear the good news of God the Shepherd looking for us, crawling through bushes and thorns, shouting out our name, listening. And of God the Householder turning her house upside down in search for us, upside down on hands and knees, and then rejoicing jubilantly when the lost is found. Are these pictures that you have of God? Maybe not, but that is God too. Abundant, joyous, unconditional love towards each and every one of us. Now the parables also teach us something about ourselves. The lost sheep is helpless and vulnerable. It needs the flock and the shepherd to protect and guide it. And just so every one of us is created to find meaning and fulfillment in communion with God and others. Love God and love your neighbor. The same is true for the lost coin. If it wouldn't be found lying in some dusty corner, it would be completely without value unless it is possessed by its owner again. Each of us has a mission in life, a purpose, a task, and as God's creatures and parts of God's creation, we are tasked to be good stewards. We have a duty to protect and care for each other and all creation. Jesus tells the parables to people who don't admit to being lost, the Pharisees and the scribes. But there is richness in the experience of being lost and found that they can't see. In lostness, we learn about our, our own vulnerability, about empathy, about humility and patience. The experience of lostness shows us who we really are and who God is. It sometimes might be hard to trust, but God deems us, you and me, worth looking for. And that is certainly not the image of God that speaks from the sign, Jesus or hell. I don't know about you, but I suddenly feel the urge to print signs, to carry them outside, to find a spot 
where they literally get a lot of traffic and then put them up in a way that they are a pain to take down again. And next to Jesus or hell, my sign would read, God is love. Amen.